Amen and amen and amen. We thank God for this afternoon. Um, last week, I began a series. How many of you were in church last week? You were in the service last week. You were in the service last week. What did you learn? There was something important I talked on last week. What did I teach on? Deliverance. And uh, there are conditions for deliverance. Um, what are the conditions? Number one, if you want to be delivered, you have to be what? Number one, you have to be what? Humble. Yes. You must be humble, meaning that regardless of who you are, the level you think you are, if you feel you need help, seek help. Are you getting me? Yes. Yeah. Don't pride in your title and suffer. Amen? Amen. If you feel you need help, seek help. And number two, I said you must be must be what? Honest. Honest. For you to be delivered, you need absolute honesty. You need to come clean exactly what the problem is. Because pastors or men of God or prophets are like doctors. Most of the time, we work with what you tell us. Amen? So if you want to be helped, you must be absolutely honest so that you can be helped. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And number three? You must be what? Willing. Yes. Must be, you must be willing. It's not like you want to be delivered. You don't want to be delivered. Amen? Amen. Yes. And the last one, the fourth one was what? You must what? You must what? Yes. You must cultivate personal discipline. The main reason why people move from one deliverance minister to the next deliverance minister is because they lack personal discipline. Because it doesn't matter how powerful a man of God is after he has prayed for you and you still trickle back into whatever it is that you were, that made you get into that bondage or you open that door that made you get into that bondage, you keep going back into the same thing. And from the scripture we read, if you get delivered, and the demon comes back. The demon comes back with seven more wicked demons to afflict you. Amen? Amen. Yes. And today, um, I said in the morning service, I said something very profound. That this week is Valentine. Look at somebody and say, this week is Valentine. This week is Valentine. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This week, somebody will cry. This week, somebody... I'm not, I'm not prophesying doom, but it's something that is definitely going to happen. Somebody, the man you call your bay will disappear from tomorrow, actually. They'll disappear from tomorrow, and then Saturday, Sunday, they'll tell you they came back, they traveled, something happened, their phone was not working, all those stories. You understand? Come again. They, they attended a certain conference for work. And this week, somebody might get unnecessarily pregnant. Or they, what they call unwanted what? Pregnancy. But may God deliver you. And that is why what I'm going to teach you today is very, very important. How many of you have this book that I wrote some years back? Breaking Soul Ties and Spiritual Marriages. Somebody say spiritual husbands. Spiritual husbands. Or what we call spirit marriages. And uh, today I want to get into a book I've, read, I've written. And then we are going to go through it to help you um, this week and next week. And uh, it will help you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How many of you want to have a very good marriage if God blesses you? You want to have a very good marriage? Yes. Even if you are married and it's not good, but you want to have a good one. You can still raise your hand. Hallelujah. So, what is a soul tie? I'm teaching on breaking soul ties. I needed to make you understand. Because, you see, if I don't prepare your mind, I don't want to have a church with a lot of unnecessary problems. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Yes. 
And so you have to be prepared. What is a soul tie? A soul tie is an invincible bond between two people. An invincible spiritual connection. And I want you to today make notes, even if you have never made notes in church, not unless you don't have anything else to make notes, make notes. It's an invincible spiritual connection that binds two people together. An invincible spiritual connection that binds two people together. The reason why soul ties exist is because man was not created to be alone. Naturally, you are not supposed to be alone. Say, I'm not supposed to be alone. I'm not supposed to be alone. Yeah, that is why when you find yourself lonely, there is that craving in your heart for someone. Is there someone here who is alone and who can attest to what I'm talking about? When you find yourself lonely, there is that craving for someone. Is there anybody here like that? So many of you, right? Good. There is that craving for someone. There is a natural desire for every person to be connected to someone. It doesn't mean um, um, it has to be sexual. It's, it's just natural desire. Every human being has the proclivity to be connected to someone. You, there is that natural desire for every one of us to be connected to someone or to have somebody. And uh, like I always say, at least, you see, some people wake up every morning to a test message. How are you, baby? How are you? My, and some of you, the only test message you receive is from Safaricom. I'm sure they are reminding you Pay your insurance balance. And it can be very depressing. Some, phone, some people, their phones don't ring at all. Do I have a witness? Yes. It's your uncle that will be calling you or your grandmother to ask for money from the village. So there is that tendency, please let's listen, for every one of us to be connected to someone. And so... That proclivity or that tendency that makes you long to be with a person is what now sometimes negatively is construed or happens and that brings what we call a soul tie. Now, I told you the other day, I mean, I think that was um, um, in my, I don't know whether it's in this book or one of the books, actually, in my book, How to Attract the Attention of a Man, that there is nothing like love at first sight. You cannot, if anybody tells you, to, they meet you today, and after three days, they tell you they love you, they are lying to you, because there is nothing like that. Amen? There is what we call attraction at first sight. You can meet somebody, you can be so much attracted to the person, but there is love takes time to grow. Love takes time to develop. True love and genuine love takes time to grow based on circumstances that possibly may be presented at that particular time. Now, if, is there anyone, I, I want somebody who can be, who can volunteer to use themselves as an example. Um, you know, if you love someone, you cannot actually tell the exact day you fell in love with a person. Who, who understand what I'm saying? If I ask you on what day, PK, is that not so? It's true. Good. Yes. At least I have somebody to help me preach. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? You can't tell exactly which day you fell in love with a person, but you can tell you love this person. Is that not what I'm saying? Yeah. The reason is, follow me, the reason is, Actual, real love happens in a process of time. Somebody say in a process of time. A process of time. So love happens in the process of time. The more you talk to someone, the more you connect with someone, gradually there is a bond that is created between you and that person that 
in the process of the time you fail, you find yourself in a space that possibly you don't want to be feel like ah, so I mean why am I now so much into this person that when the person is not there you feel incomplete when a person has not called you from morning to maybe for two days you feel like hey what is wrong are you getting what I'm saying your heart starts to beat run like the same boat why because you feel something is off are we together so that same connection that makes a person love another is the same way so ties are created that you can get so much it doesn't necessarily mean a male and a female it can be two females two males i mean it can be anybody so tie, there are several types of so ties that you get so much connected to someone that you can't even it's like you cannot do without the person are we here yes sir. yeah so that is how so ties are created and at the point it comes you don't really find out when it happened but then what i'm dealing with today is actually sexual so ties somebody say sexual so ties sexual so ties. i hope we don't have any underage in the service but i will try what i'm saying run 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 if you are under 18 go to sunday school now run to sunday school quickly 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 go to sunday school if you're under 18 go to sunday school now now if you're under 18 go to sunday school praise god yeah. So what is a sexual so tie? A sexual so tie, write it down, is when an invincible, strong sexual bond binds two people in an intimate relationship. An invincible bond. Literally, you cannot see it, it's not something you can see. But there is something that binds two people together in a sexual relationship. When someone, the dangerous thing about so ties, I need to teach it this week because, and especially this month, because in this confusion, so many things can happen. Hallelujah. When someone is in a so tie, they can never, ever be satisfied in a relationship. In any other relationship they enter into. And you need to know it so that you can have a good relationship or a good marriage. When someone is in a soul tie with another person and they enter into a new relationship, it doesn't work. It doesn't last. That new relationship or marriage or whatever it is, is frail or weak because spiritually there is a bond that binds the person to somewhere else somebody say a bond shout it say a bond bond in the case of a single person that means you are not in any relationship let's say can i use two people as an example any um, um yes pk they are calling you so come and then I get another lady, a lady, a man and a lady, and another man, another man, two men. Where? Who? Ren. Ren. Kuja. Yeah. And another man. Yes. So, okay. Bruce, you stand, stay back. And let's assume, um, okay, come this way. Um, stand in the middle. Ren, come stand in the middle. Now, let's assume face each other. Ren, I said, let's what? Assume. And the word underlined here is what? Assume. Please. So that you don't go and uh, misinterpret what the pastor said. So the pastor said. <laughs> but the underlined word here is what? Assume. We are assuming. It's an assumption. It's just an example. Let's assume Ren and PK is in a relationship. And then Ren, somehow the relationship breaks. 
Okay? So Ren meets Bruce. <laughs> Ren meets who? Bruce. Now, get me the tie quickly. Now, because quickly, 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 quickly. Yeah, now you are going to tie uh, Ren up and hold and bruise um, and, and hold it and, and then that one. No, no, no. Make sure tie them together. Bring it up that way. Good. Hold it at the back. Yes. So now, Ren 10. When they were in a relationship, there was, a, as long as there was a sexual intimacy, well, there was what we call a sexual bond. Someone say a, special, a sexual, bond. sexual bond. That comes to exist between these two. So, after some time, maybe we don't know what happens. Life happens, like we always say it. And Ren leaves the relationship and finds Mr. Bruce. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Now, Ren finds Mr. Bruce, and Ren is getting connected to. Can, please, can you come and hold it? Hold it. Just hold it. Just hold it. So that, yeah, it can. Yeah. Ren finds Bruce. But because this bond that existed between them was not dealt with, what happens is that. Even though she's supposed to get close to Bruce, there is a bond that always what? And it is not a bond that you can see or you can tell. Circumstances and situations always makes Ren, in as much as she's supposed to be looking here, look at Bruce because he's the new guy. <laughs> now she's somehow always being pulled backwards towards an ex or someone he's not supposed to be with or he has left she has left sorry are you getting me yes sir. are you following me yes sir. so they are here thinking things are new everything is okay but as long as that bond was not dealt with there is still a connection that exists between these two are you following me? Yes. Now follow this. Now there is a certain. Uh, this is not just Bible. I'm not. I've not even given you a scripture. I'm talking about science. Somebody say science. Science. I mean, as a researcher, there is a, there is there is um, um, a certain um, um, author called Doctor Daniel Amen. Now Doctor Daniel Amen wrote a book. He's a psychiatrist, and he wrote a book called Change. Um, 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 he's the author of the book when, I mean, called Change Your Mind and Change Your Life. And he did a research into sexual bonds. And this is what he said. Let me read quotes. He says, whenever two people are sexually involved with one another, this is a medical doctor. He says, there are neurochemical changes that occur in the, in the brains that encourages what is known as limbic emotional bond. Now, when Ren, everybody listen to this, and PK, let's assume they had a sexual relationship. The moment there was, there is some neurochemical reactions that happens in their minds that binds these two together. That somehow, when Ren is not connected to PK, there is still that tendency that makes her want to what? Look back. If, if you, most of you will be very honest. You are honest Christians. And not hypocrites and pretenders. There is some ex that left you way back. Some guy. When the person calls you, you start to shake. Hello? Hello? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Sir. No. No. Is that true or not? It is true. Sir. It's true. The person is not in your presence, but somehow he or she controls your presence. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Yeah. That sometimes, I mean, as a counselor counseling so many people, sometimes you listen to somebody's story and you feel like, what is this? 
The person has left years ago, but somehow you keep having flashbacks of that person. Are you getting me? Yes. Some people say, oh, me, no. Ah, but you are lying. So, as long as that limbic emotional bond or that soul tie is not dealt with, it still holds these two together. Now, this is what he said. He says, the limbic emotional bond, the saddest thing for women, is that it is stronger in women than it is in men. So, even though these two may part ways, it is easy for this one to move on. But this one, struggles to move on. Why? Because of the scientific neurochemical reactions that goes on in a woman's brains that still makes them want to somehow go back. Are you getting me? Yes. Are you following me? But men are able to deal with it easily, but women are not. That's why you hardly hear a man says his heart is broken. Broken heart usually happens to who? Women. See, women get hurt during a separation of a relationship or a marriage than men because of those neurochemical reactions which are more stronger in a woman than in a man. Number two. Now let's go to Bible. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, let's go to Bible. Now go with me. Now hold on, hold on now. Okay, let me try to explain this before we go into scripture. Now, Ren is supposed to be looking at Bruce. Ren. But now, every time there is a pool that pulls her towards PK. Instead of her looking at her present, she's always being put back to her past. Now, get, get this, get this, get this. And there is always that connection that somehow makes you want to get back to a certain ex that you know very well the person is not good for you. You know this one. But, hallelujah, glory be to God. Amen. Are you getting my point? Yes. So, hold it now. So, sometimes, when that happens it now there's supposed to be another bond i, I thought I, I would have an, another rule but it's okay there's supposed to be a bond between ren and bruce but this bond becomes weaker now okay let's bring your hand bruce your hand stretch your hand towards there good now watch this ren and bruce are supposed to be connected but because they are tied and this one pulls her backwards the bond here becomes weaker and weaker are you following me? Yes, sir. Because of the bond of the past. Can I be honest with you? Yes. Let's assume. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ren, you are a very good woman. Let's assume Ren had another guy. And like some of you, I mean, it's not like we are in church. So, I mean, some of you, you have one person for Empesa, another one for house rent, another one for glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let's not pretend it's not true. See, nobody will tell you the truth, but I will tell you. So let's assume Ren had another bond. So now this bond is pulling Ren. That bond is pulling Ren. And the present is pulling Ren. Stretch your hand. So there's so much pull. So what makes it doesn't matter how perfect this is supposed to be. There is a spiritual pool that always pulls Ren from her present. So nothing, no present relationship works. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes. Sir. Now I'm going to come back to this particular illustration um, pretty soon and then uh, we can be able to go. Not so um, um, now um, PK, now you are going to, can I get Bruce, you can have a seat. Can I get two other ladies? Now remove this bond. Can I get two other ladies? Can I get the, 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 those things now? Can I get three more ladies or four if possible? Ladies, I mean, are there no ladies here? 
I mean, we are just choosing from the choir. Choir ladies, just come. come. Hold this, right? Yes, hold this. Yes, good. Tina, hold this. Yes, hold this one. Now, let's get someone. Last person. Uh, who else? Who else? Yes, Monica, come. Yeah, just hold this one. Thank you. Now, thank you. Now, what is this? Anti-marriage spirit, alcoholism, bad luck, strange sicknesses, poverty. Now, watch this. Anytime. Now, let's go to scripture. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 from the Message Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 from the Message Bible. Can I get two more men? Two more men. Two more men. Yes, Bruce. You see, Asaph has pretended to be writing. <laughs> Two more men. Yes, just stand there. Now, shall we read what is on the screen? One go. Let's put it on the screen. Everybody, open your eyes. Read. One go. Now, this is Bible we are reading. This is not my book. This is Holy Bible. So, read it. One go. Mm -hmm. now the bible says there is more to sex than mere skin to skin it's not just a good time it is spiritual hallelujah glory be to god amen sex is what my friends say it it's not like that's why i told the children to leave this place sex is not as sex is written in the bible so what is your problem say it like you the Bible says there is more to sex than mere skin to skin on skin. Sex is much spiritual mystery. It's a spiritual mystery. Can you imagine that? It is a what? It's a spiritual mystery. It is a dangerous thing. It's not just a matter of having fun. It's a spiritual mystery. Now, how many of you have heard of STDs? You have heard of STDs. What is STD? There is something more than STDs. You know, take this from me. If you can sleep with someone and an STD can be transferred, there is something more that can be transferred more than an STD. Those are what we call sexually transmitted demons. Can I tell you, the Bible is saying it is a spiritual mystery. What it simply means, hear me and hear me well, is that anytime there is a sexual intercourse, there is, there is an exchange of spirits. Somebody say an exchange of spirits. Exchange of spirits. And that is what people may not tell you. And that is why some of you are still here suffering. There is an exchange of spirits between, let's say, Ren and PK. They didn't, let's assume something happened. It was not just a matter of fun. It was a spiritual exchange. Somebody say spiritual exchange. Spiritual exchange. Something from PK will enter into rain and something from rain will enter into PK. Let's assume PK had that. And this one had that. PK had strange, as there is a spirit that makes strange diseases come to him. So once he does it, he transfers that to the air, and this one transfers what he's got. It doesn't mean he does not still have what he has. What he has is transferred here, and what that one has is also transferred there. Because when you have an STD and you transfer it, it doesn't mean after transferring it, you are cured of it. Is that not it? You still have it, isn't it? In the same way, there are certain conditions sadly enough, both good and bad. Say both good and bad. That is why sometimes you can sleep, have a sexual relationship with someone. Right after that person, everything in your life starts going bad. Why? Because the spirit they carry is a bad spirit. So negativity, pain, frustration starts to follow you. So if PK, let me give me these two. PK had these three problems and give me, let's say there's one. 
some, some one good one in the midst of it. You understand? So she, he, he will give you all this as you also give him all that. So there is a spiritual exchange any time there is a sexual intercourse. So let's assume PK only had that. So and then you had that. So you engage. Ten here. PK gets that, or PK gives that one to this one. Okay, or PK gets his strange diseases together with the bad luck from rain. And then PK later meets Judy. And then transfers that to Judy. Are you getting me? And Judy met Brian who was a very nice guy. No problems. No issues. And transfers them to Bruce. So now Bruce starts having problems that he never used to have. That he doesn't understand. But little would any one of you connect and say it was possibly because of a sexual relationship I had. Are we here? Yes, sir. Are we here? Yes, sir. Follow me. Yeah. So that starts to happen. So this one also possibly connects with that and swap that. So there is always a constant transfer of one condition from to, um, to the other. And if you are not careful in a situation where you are in a bad, you, you fall into a bad person, whether being a bad man or a bad woman, you can be finished completely. Are you following me? Yes. So if PK is here, I mean PK and then Tina come. Yes. So Judy, Tina, Ren. PK finished here and then came to finish this one and then came to finish that one. Are you getting me? No, he will not finish you in Jesus' name. So, there is the transfer. Somebody say the transfer. the transfer. They also carry whatever it is then to the next person. And there is a transfer. And like I said, I need to balance it. In the same way there are bad transfers, there are also good transfers sometimes. Say good transfers. Good transfers. Yeah, there are people that you also connect with that you everything begins to go right. Oh, is that not true? It's true. There are people that Everything begins to go right. There are people that everything begins to go wrong. But you see, you cannot chance that. That is why you don't just have to play around and go around and find every person around and you just give freely. Hello? Hello? Yeah, freely have I received. Freely do I give. You know, when I came, when I started coming to Kenya... A, a friend of mine who was a pastor, he was telling me, he was now started telling me about Kenya and says, okay, now, Kikuyus are like this, uh, uh, these people are like that, this tribe is like that. So he told me, there's a certain tribe, I will not mention the name. Say, prof, when you ask them for, we are all over it, isn't it? If you ask them for sex, and they say no, by the time you get home, he says, you come, you come, you come. <laughs> I'm like, hey, say my friend, those ones, they are dangerous. Say, see, you come, because freely have they received, freely are they given. After service, you can see me, I'll tell you that tribe, and who told me, because the person is a, a man of God. Says, says, by the time you get, say, you come, because they feel bad if they don't give you. <laughs> No, that is what I was told. Me, I'm just relaying information I received. Are you getting my point? Yeah. So, you need to manage yourself as a Christian so that you don't go about giving things freely. Because it is not just fun. The Bible says it is a spiritual mystery. It is more than just fun. Please, you can have your seats as I continue my seat. Thank you. Come on, put your hands together for them. Yes. It is not just fun. Tell your neighbor, it's not just fun. Not just fun. Yes. So, 
as life gets complicated and things get busy, you need to understand that so ties can make you get so attached to one person in such a way that it looks like you are you literally cannot be without them, not just in a good sense, but in a bad way. Because you know it is a toxic relationship, it is destroying you, but still, you just still can't break away. I said here, promiscuous sexual encounters can lead to transfer and exchange of demonic spirits between the individuals involved. Samson lost his anointing because of his promiscuity. See, Samson used to sleep, he was an anointed man, used to sleep around, but one day he met a wrong woman. Say a wrong woman. A wrong woman. And the Bible says he, she was a woman of the valley. I, I preached it a few weeks ago during Kesha. How many of you remember that? The Bible says that Samson used to sleep with people in Judges chapter 16, but when she entered a woman of the valley, a woman that is, a valley is a low land. That means a woman that is low spiritually. Say low spiritually. Low spiritually. When you talk about mountain top, mountain talks talk about a prayer. I mean, anytime you see mountain in the Bible, it talks about prayer, it talks about spirituality. But when it talks about valley, it talks about a place of low spirituality. So the Bible said the woman was from the valley of Solek. Now, um, 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 this woman, it signified that she was not spiritual she was a spiritually weak woman she was not someone that is spiritually inclined and through that he lost his anointing the bible says and 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 take uh, the, the, shall we read um, um judges 16 for read one go now okay let's start from verse one so that i show you how something was now shall we read one go She saw what? No, no, no. Please take your time. She saw who? You know who a halot is? You understand English? So I don't need to explain, right? Good. Now, Samson went to Gaza and saw a halot there and went into her. When he say went into her, you understand that one too? Good. Slept with her. And then that was it. She saw a halot. So it was not new for Samson to sleep with a halot. It happened. So in Gaza, she did it and she went source free. But when she went to the valley of Sorek, saw another woman in the Philistine, he came down. I pray that may you not get into anything that will bring you down. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. One silly, careless, uncalculated mistake can finish you completely. Next verse. She went into a very uh, a woman. Uh huh. Uh huh. Shall we all read, please? One go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh huh. Mm -hmm. Carried them on his shoulders and and what and did what carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. He carried the whole gate of the city of Gaza on his shoulders. And he had just finished with the halot. Now, something's anointing was just in strength. So the harlot did not make him lose the strength or that anointing. So he kept fooling around. Are you following me? Yes. So, but now when he got to another one, boom, disaster strikes. So what am I trying to say? The fact that the grace and the message of God may preserve you in a certain condition does not mean you must fool around. Now, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The fact that the grace and the message of God may be available. I mean, Paul said, I mean, because grace abounds you, we continue to sin. 
Are you getting my point? Yeah. So he carried the gate on the city and then, see, you are fooling around, doing it around to this week. I said, I need to preach this sermon this week, not any other week. Uh -huh. next, next verse. Next verse. After it happened, then he loved a woman in the valley of so the first one there was no problem. See, there was no problem. But now this particular woman was a woman from the valley. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this to you. You must be very careful who you connect with. People who are not spiritual can destroy you. Say they can destroy you. They can destroy you. Yeah. This is a woman in the valley. And you see, the Bible makes sure that they wrote where she comes from in capital letters. Talking about her source. Say her source. Her source. Yes. Uh huh. Call Delilah. And the loss of the Philistine came to her and said, Entice him and find out where his strength lies, by and by which means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to what? Afflict him, and every one of us will give you 1100 pieces of silver. So the valley, a woman in the valley will fall for anything against you. Are you hearing me? Like, also, there are also men in the valley. So don't be, a, and in fact, there are more men in the valley than women in the valley. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. There are what? More what? Men in the valley. See, there is this attitude of Christian ladies. Oh, you no, know, Christian men are not romantic. They are too flat. You know, they, 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 all those stories. How many of you have heard it before? Say, Christian men are not romantic. So they like these guys that have one ear in here. They have got one ear. Now, I'm not saying if you have a ear in, it's a problem. Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying. But they, they want some guy that will be coming. Hey, babe. <laughs> 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 yeah. With, with a six pack. Six pack will not pay your bills, my friend. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So the guy comes funny looking, you know, with, with a bottle of whiskey like this. <laughs> Ragged. Swag. Will swag pay your bills? No, swag doesn't pay bills, my friend. Get yeah, that six pack. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. So let's go here. They came to Samson. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to be afflicted. So Samson kept tossing Delilah, tossing Delilah, tossing Delilah until the Bible says Delilah knocked Samson day and night, day in and day out until Samson gave in. And that is how he got destroyed. I mean, I think it's, it's, I think it's in the message where you find it. He says, and Delilah nagged something day in and out. He, I mean, she kept nagging him. Where is it? Tell me. Well, how can I bind you? And the Bible says, the day something told Delilah the secret to, her, to his strength, he became like any ordinary man and that's why i always tell you anybody that knows your secret has got power over you anyone that knows your secret has got what power over you and hear me this is not part of the sermon but let me say it in person that there are certain things about you only you should know did you hear what i said yes. yeah you see some of you you are so open and you know me, I need to come open. And, and you see, everybody knows your story. Everybody knows everything about you, my friend. That is a dangerous place to be. Amen? Are you hearing me? Yes. That is what? A dangerous place to be. It's a dangerous place to be when like everybody knows everything about you. That means you can be brought down at any given time. The loss of the Philistine brought next verse quickly. No, get, go to the next verse. Now, the men in line say, wait, uh huh, go to the next verse. Verse 10. Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. 
Go to the next verse. Go to the next verse. Uh huh. Now, shall you read one go? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, Delilah wanted information. I told you, women of the valley always look for what? Information. They look for what? They look for what? Information. information. Information that is to what? To destroy you. Men in the valley look for information that can, something they can have on you so that one day they can pull that card on you to destroy you. But I pray that may Jehovah God preserve your lives. I receive it. That no one shall use any information against you to destroy you. I receive If you are here, shout, I receive that. I receive that. Imagine the words of Delilah. It says, how can you say you love me when your heart is not with me? Verse 16. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with words and pressed him. So that his soul was versed to what? Now, give me verse 16 in, ampli in, in message. This same verse in message. Hear it in message. Uh -huh. Shall we read one go? That is what women of the they will nag you day after day with Inf looking for something to bring you down. So the point I was trying to make you understand is, it doesn't matter the fact that you played around and it's nothing happened. It doesn't mean you should go around fooling around. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the man of God is talking to you. The man of God is talking to you. Yeah. Maybe you, when something went to Gaza, he, got, he went scot free. He came to the valley of Zorek and went down. Somebody say mercy. mercy. Yeah. So now, I've talked about soul ties. So what are the characteristics of soul ties? Number one, and then we can do, we can go about breaking them and dealing with them before we, we leave here. Number one, characteristics of soul ties. Number one, when you are in a soul tie with someone, you have obsessive thoughts and feelings about a person, even when they say they are no longer interested in you. They have already told you, nah, this one me, I don't want you, but you, you see me, I'm not going. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Somebody's feeling like, Pastor, you are talking about me. They say they don't need you. Go home. Go back to your mother's house. Says nobody's leaving this relationship. He says, they tell you my love is finished. You say, you can, we can use my love in this one. I don't love you. No, you, don't, you don't need to have love. You are using mine. We, you can Bluetooth mine. The guy has told you he does not love you anymore. He says, no, it's, you, don't, you don't need to love me. It's okay, me, I love you. Let's work. It's a sign. This is characterized by always wanting to be with them, even though you might have been informed or they have demonstrated to you that they don't want to be with you. They have already demonstrated to you they don't want to be with you, but you still want to be with them. Can I tell you something? Yes. They, they have told you they don't want to be with you or they have shown you they don't want to be with you. They come today, they disappear for two months and they come, uh, they come in, they tell you one thing and your mind melts like from... The guy disappeared for one month, shows up and the mumu in you still allows. I mean, which mumu are you? From which village? Are you a bigger one or a smaller one? It's a sign you are in a bondage. It's a bondage. Tell anybody it's a bondage. It's a bondage. Yeah. Number two, the other party manipulates you and controls you to your detriment, but you are unable to leave. You are being controlled, manipulated, but you are still not able to leave. You are literally at your beck and call. You know you are being manipulated and they have excessive control over you, but you just can't help it. You just can't help it. Number four, you justify their negative behavior. You've called them for three days, they are not picking. Four days, they are not picking. They are not returning your call. Oh, no, you know he's busy. No, he's a busy man. Oh, no. I mean, four days, he has not called you. Okay, 
I, I mean, he's still busy. Oh, I mean, he's, he's traveled. Oh, when he comes back, he will call. You don't know he's traveled, but you are convincing yourself the mumu has traveled. But the guy is still around. Somebody say mercy. You defend the person's negative behavior. You literally defend it. And you justify it. You, you convince yourself so that you don't feel bad. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Especially if you know you are a shout. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every so tie. Every so Today. Yeah. I break it. I break it. Number five. Oh, number. You are unable to move into a healthy and a stable relationship as you are unable to appreciate your new partner. And that is the problem. That's why people in so ties never ever have stable relationships. Six, two months, it dies. Three months, it dies. Six months, it dies. Why? Because you are not able to appreciate the person you have because you are always looking backwards. You are always having a, 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 a flashback. You feel like there is something that is still missing in the present. Are we together? Yes. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. What you have, it doesn't matter how good it is, it may never work. Why? Because you're always looking backwards. You feel like there is something else you need. There is something better than what you have. So you will never be able to have anything. Number five. Some tables are shaking. Hey, today the tables will shake. See? Somebody say, why did I even not stay home and watch online? As long as you are here, listen. You don't have any option <laughs> to listen. You are ready, right? Okay, number five. You take on the spiritual issues of the person, like bad luck, re bad luck rejection, disappointment, failure, strange sicknesses. You take up, I mean, things that was not in your life starts to happen. You take up those negative spiritual issues of the person. Now, how to break them, number one. How do you break these so ties? You know, I'm rushing through them because I want to fix everything right now. Okay? I'm just reading one chapter of the book. The rest of the chapters, you can go home and buy the book at the book stand and go and read the rest of it for yourself. Um, number one, how do you break so ties? Do not allow the soul tie, any soul tie, to gain roots in your mind. Do not allow yourself to be controlled by your past. That's what I mean. Don't allow any soul tie to gain roots in your mind. Don't allow yourself to be controlled by your past. See, when you pathways go through the emotions, allow yourself to go through the stages. Tell you anybody, allow yourself to go through the stages. It's, it's like when you lose a partner or lose someone, it's like grief. Grief is in stages, you understand? I mean, when you lose the person, you cry, you cry, you cry. I mean, you cry. I mean, sometimes you come out, you put makeup, you pretend you are okay, you go home, you cry. I mean, allow yourself to cry. I mean, it's part of it. And allow yourself to go through what? the emotions. Because if you pretend that you are strong, you would always keep going back. Are we together? Yes. The Bible says when Job lost everything, he allowed, he went through the emotions, he lost his family, he went through the emotions, he acknowledged what I, and you see, most people live in denial. Tell anybody they live in denial. They live in denial. In fact, can I boldly say, some of you, your relationships finished 2022. It finished, but the guy is still around. No, he goes three months, come back three months, say, hi, hi, baby, he tests you. Ah, uh, I'm a potelia, happy. Ah. Say Nico too, because you are Nico too, you know, you are not busy, you are have nothing doing. Oh, um, can we meet for coffee? And then coffee will translate. Ah, um, I mean, I drop you home. You know, let's pass by my house for some. By the time you pass by your house, you stay there, you relax, and you are finished completely. And then ah, you go home. And then by the time he drops you home, you don't hear from him again. One week, two weeks, three weeks, one month. What happened? Two, two months, third month, he start looking for you. Mumu, as Mumu as you are. Ah, uh, where are you? Immediately he tells, hi, babe. The person has disappeared for two months. And you are, you have the wisdom to respond. And the person is calling you, baby. 
Are you okay? And you see, you also respond, hi, babe, and the person disappeared. Why? Because you are in a bondage. Hello? Somebody say bondage. No, say every bondage. Every bondage. In my life. In my life. Today. Today. Break. Break. So number one, acknowledge what has happened. When you go through separation, whether it is divorce, um, 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 these are stages of grief. Read the stages of grief. Number one is what? Most of the time, when you lose a partner, you leave, you you believe you are you are in denial that it has what? It's like ah no, it's not happening. It has not happened. Are you getting what I'm saying? You go through what you deny. You feel like it has not happened. No, he will come back. He will come back. The guy left. Kitambo. <laughs> Songa in Bele. Is that, is this, yeah. Songa in Bele, yeah? Songa yeah. Bele. My friend, move on. The mumu has gone. Gone, gone, gone. He's not coming back. Yeah, you are living in denial. Okay, no, he's come back. Okay, it's, it's two weeks, he'll come back. Uh, one month, two weeks goes to one month, he'll come back. Two months, he ain't coming back. In fact, if he comes back after two months, he has not talked to you and he still calls you baby. And still, that means you are in a body. I'm telling you, he will still disappear. And after denial, after when you realize that actually the guy is not coming back, you get angry. Now you are trying to see what you can do. You block him. You block, go to Facebook, block him. So you block him for three days and you go back and unblock him. You're going to check what is happening, what he has posted. <laughs> you block him on WhatsApp. No, those are Sorry to say, I mean, sorry, I mean, let me say it, but I, I, I'm, I'm holding what I want to say. <laughs> if you block, yeah, pastor is reminding me we are alive, so I have to manage what I'm saying. If you block someone, you won't block, you block, you won't block, you block, you won't block. You have a problem. It's either you are a psycho or you need prayer. Tell anybody, which one is it? Do you need prayer? Hmm? Or you have a psychological problem? <laughs> yeah. You go, you, you go, you block him on Instagram, you go check what he has posted, and immediately you see the guy with another lady post, they are seated, you start crying. I mean, you are causing yourself pain for no reason. Do I have a witness? Yes. They will post another person on their status. We are chilling. Ah, then you see tears flowing like river what? Which one? <laughs> so, when you, you move from denial, you get to what? Anger. And then you go to the place of what? to work. After you are angry a bit, okay, let me try and see. Let me test the waters. High. Just put high. <laughs> then you delete. <laughs> no, you write a long sentence. You post and then you delete. <laughs> Pastor Joshua, the way he's bowed down his head. Uh, <laughs> you delete. And then the person, I mean, say, the person responds after you are deleted. And he says, did you read what I posted? My friend, he read. He just pretended not to have read. So you are trying to bargain to see. And then after you bargain and it doesn't work, now you enter into what? Depression. And after the depression state, now you accept that. This mumu is gone. So I have to songa. Exactly. So you need to accept it. I mean, allow yourself to go through the stages. If you miss one, you might have to come back. Accept it, reflect, and give it time and present the matter to God. You see, allow the Holy Spirit to heal your heart. Pray about it. Because there are certain bondages you can't get yourself out of, not until God comes through. If the Holy Spirit does not intervene in certain bondages, my friend, you can't go. 
it is toxic as what? But you, still, you are still within the toxicity and you still feel like you need help. And you see, this thing I'm teaching you is just for you to go teach someone else. Are you hearing me? Go do what? Teach someone else, your brother, your sister, your cousin, somebody that may need this information. Amen? Amen. Yes. And you, you allow the Holy Spirit to help you. Number two. Break free and break away from the past in order to be ready for a new fulfilling relationship. If you are in a new relationship, try as much as possible to break free and break away from the past. Break free and what? Break away. You see, for you to move on towards the new future, you must have inner strength, number one, courage, number two, and three, the third one is what I like, the willpower to break away from your past. Mm -hmm. See, the willpower. the willpower. That is the discipline to break away from your past. See, you must learn to let go of your past in order to embrace a new future. Otherwise, your past, like I said, you saw the, the rope illustration I, I, had, I had here. Your past will always pull you back. So you may never be able to stay in any long-lasting relationship. Give me Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14 from the NIV. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Can I tell you something? I mean, I understand that um, there are certain relationships, there are certain bridges you don't burn, but there are certain relationships also they are not good for you. There are certain people, they are not good for you. They may not be bad people, but they are just not good for you. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Sir. There are certain people, they are not bad people, they are not just what? Good for you. So you need the wisdom to be able to know that John may be a good guy. He's a Christian. He speaks in tongues. Fire comes down from heaven when he speaks. But John is not good for me. Maybe Mary may be as beautiful as Miss Weld. But my friend, she may not be good for you. She may be good for someone else, but not for you. And he may be good for someone else. Now, let me ask you. Can I tell you something? Everybody listen to me. What is this? IPhone. What is this? No, no. What is this? IPhone. Good. What is this one? IPhone. If I give this iPhone to 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 who? To um to to is your mother alive? Yeah, how old is your mom? 88. So if I give this phone to your mother, I mean what can your mother use an iPhone to do? Maybe call? Test even she cannot even test. Possibly. Are you getting me? So she will not value this iPhone. Not because it is not a good phone, but it is not something she needs at this particular time. She cannot understand the value of this because of her age and the kind of person she is. But if I give this phone to a younger person, some 26, 25, Brian. Yeah, I give it to Brian or Isap or PK. I mean, this, they can use this phone to, to do so many things. And that is how human beings are. There are certain people, they may not be good for you, but they may be good for someone else. Mm. The same guy you call a mumu, an idiot, is somebody's prince. Hey, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, Igwe. <laughs> the, the what? The, give me some names. Huh? Huh? What names do you call your guys, women? Huh? Ba what? Bazoo. Bazoo. Hey, this one I've never heard. <laughs> that is called what? Bazooka or what? Bazoo. Wow. Like a big man. Rich. Oh, Bazoo. And they, this, the new one is Daz, and this Zazi or Dazi. How do you call it? Dazi. Zazi. Zadi. Something. Something like that. 
Mr. Pre the president of my heart. The king of my empire. And you don't even have the land. Which empire? Huh? You are the Lord. The same person, hear me. The same person you are considering. Ah, this one. Ah, no, this one. Hey, don't go there. This one. Somebody calls him all the names you can think of. So when you see someone, who is, hey, now this one. Hey, don't go there. He says, Ah, me, I'll go. I'm very okay where I am. Are you getting my point? So someone may be bad, may be good. They not be good for you. I beg your pardon, but they. It doesn't mean they are not good for someone else. Amen. Yeah, so when you part ways in any relationship, let me put it that way, or marriage, or you divorce, move on. Tell your neighbor, move on. Move on. This issue of unnecessarily meeting for coffee, and you know, we, are, we are doing business, my friend, nothing. One business, one day, one night, eh, pay, pay, before you realize, point, you are done. Which business? Give us a break. You think we are idiots, eh? My business partner. We, we are not. We use he's my ex, but now we are just business partners. Uh, that is the biggest lie of the 21st century. Prayer partner. We only pray at midnight. Hey! <laughs> so, out of all the people in the church, you are telling me it's only that one you could pray for at midnight. And then at midnight, that is when you see visions. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Let's go. Sh let's read Philippians 3.13. One go. Shall we read one go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Let's go back. He says, forgetting what is what? Forgetting what is what? Behind. Forgetting what is what? Behind. My friend, forget what is behind. Can I tell you? Look at me. Every good thing is in front of you. Look, look at yourself. Behind. What is behind you? Be what comes out from behind you? Nothing good. If you're still not catching it, you are slow. <laughs> Every good thing is what? Ahead of you. So if you are still looking behind, what is behind? Nothing good. There's nothing good behind. Amen? He says, I do not count myself to have apprehended or to have arrived. But one thing I do, I forget what is behind and strive forward for what is what? Ahead of me. So, if you want to break away from soul ties, number one, learn to disconnect yourself from your past. Otherwise, you will still get back there. My father once taught me something. He says, a woman that cheats, there is an 80 to 90% chance that he will cheat again and cheat again. And cheat again. And cheat again. Once a woman falls into a so-called um, mistake, it happens. And it happens. It's just that. It's just a matter of time. It may happen in 2022. The next one it will happen in 2024. The next one it will happen in 2027. But it will happen. Most of the time. Not all the time, by the way. But most of the time. It will happen. And happen. And happen. Why? Because emotionally women are weaker vessels. The Bible says they are like unto weaker vessels. Now, let's, let's go. Number two. If you want to break away from so ties, and that is number three, right? Number what? Number three. 
Now, I said this here before we go on. You must let go of people you previously held in your heart, who you were connected to or attached to. You must move on from one relationship wholly by breaking every soul tie and disconnecting yourself from that relationship. See, let me tell you, before you move on to any relationship, learn to break the soul tie of the previous relationship. It is you need to break it, disconnect yourself, pray about it, pray and disconnect yourself. Otherwise, you may never be able to stay in the current relationship. Why? It will not work. Even if you get married, you are in your marriage and you look dissatisfied in the marriage. You are not happy. You are not happy in the marriage. So you are still looking backwards. You feel like, oh, John was better than my husband. Oh, every time you are talking to your husband, you are still making references to some Mumu that left you, and you know the guy left for someone, but you are still making references to the person that left you in your marriage. Why? Because of the fact that, simple fact that you did not take time to break the soul tie of your past. Number three, in order for you to break soul ties, engage in aggressive prayer and fasting. The Bible says there are some things that goeth not except by fasting and prayer. Next month, that is what I'm going to talk about. I mean, I'm talking about the signs of deliverance. I'm, I'll be teaching about the signs of deliverance. I'll be using Mark chapter 9. And you understand the stages, how people go through and what God actually, what happens in the process of deliverance. Mark 9, the Bible talks about the fact that Jesus said, this kind goeth not, Mark 9, 29, except by fasting and prayer. Now, give me from the King James. Shall we read one go? Again? How many of you here, you've tried to break a relationship several times and it, it never breaks? You just can't come out. It's a toxic relationship. You are, no. Why are you pretending? Okay. Let's assume, I mean, let's assume everybody is trying to be like me. Uh, me, I'm okay. But you and I know you are not okay. But let's, so let me assume that there are some 30% of the people here who are trying to come out and they are still not coming out. Tell your neighbor, fast and pray. Fast and pray. Yes. There are some things you have to. He said, this kind, not all kinds, but this particular kind. You see, because, eh, hear me, I, there's this thing I didn't say at the introduction stage. Every bond, people have different spiritual strength and spiritual connections. In the same way, physically, there are people who are weighty and then people who are slim or slender in the same way bonds there are certain bonds they are stronger than others there are other bonds there are certain people you can easily do away with them there are some guys you don't even remember them hello yeah there are some guys you don't even remember them but there are certain people you struggle to break away from them are you getting me yes in the night when you are there and you are alone on your bed you are still remembering oh john uh, john john was here john 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 and then now, you are always remembering John before you sleep. My friend, you are in a bondage. Hear me? And you have tried to break that thing you still can't break. You need to engage in the time of fasting and prayer and deal with that spirit. Say, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. Shout it, say, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. Shout it, say, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. Every relationship you come out of, deal with it. Maybe you, you have never been in any relationship. But your husband has or your partner has. Tell, call the person to order. Hey, John, now, you see, I caught you the other day. This thing, this relationship you had with Mary. Have you people broken the so tie? We need to break it now. This week, we are fasting and praying to deal with the so tie. And make sure that Mumu fast and prays. Otherwise, you will still go back to that person. And you will always be crying. You will always be frustrated in that place. Why? Because the guy has not dealt with what he needs to deal with. Are we together? Yes. Yes. A word to the wise. Yes, you know. Number four. Purpose to walk and to grow in the Lord. See, one of the ways that you learn to disconnect from certain things most of the time 
like a tool if you need to learn how to see if you want to detach from anything not just people anything great direct your focus on god fast more pray more concentrate on god more i mean get busy for the kingdom tell you anybody get busy for god yes to secure your deliverance from so ties you must understand your position as a christian soldier and the enemy's tactic is to make you lose your position by trying to regain you back to your ground, where you were. The enemy is always fighting to make sure you get back to where you were. And you need to stand on your ground to contend and fast and pray in order to, to be able to grow in the Lord. Number five. Now, this is what it gets, because I'm trying to finish it in the next five minutes. This is where it gets funny. Avoid every emotional connection with that person. If you want to break a soul tie with someone, avoid every word. Unnecessary calls, tests, meetings, coffees, all that drama. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you, the more you talk to someone, the more you meet up with someone, the more you connect with someone, the more you become emotionally attached to the person. Whether you like it or not. It, the way it happens, you don't even get to know. So, avoid unnecessary calls, tests, meetups, and anything that will find a way to bring you people together. Avoid it. You see, you see if you see fire and you know the fire will burn you, why do you get close to the fire? I get him here. Yeah, avoid it. That any demonic release yes. that will affect your marriage, yes. relationship, yes. that is affecting your life. Those of you that are saying, you are declaring that Lord, I halt it from the spirit realm. In the name of Jesus. Because anything that happens in the physical face happens from the spirit. Sometimes you don't even understand how it happened, but you are lifting up your voice in prayer. Yes. The Father, any satanic power projected into the atmosphere I decree and declare yes. against my marriage life yes. let it break break let it break. Pray. Come on, lift up your voice and talk to God. Rapa pala bashua antana makosha Shalalalele kadosha bhaya Rampalia azonia kaka Apala bakoshua antana neneme kadua tarama Radedede broshkalia azona nanamataya Apala bakoria bashua antania bakosha kaya Lelelele katona nana bashua antana Rapa palia bakonia badua ashalalala brantama Rapa <laughs> Rapa la bracha la la branca, shala la bako shala la branca. 
Shele me kadua atariya ta. Rapa pala bakoriya bashona na namataya. Rapa pala branche ne 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 me kadua ta. Rapa paliya bakoriya balua ajanta. Rapa pala bashua ante ne 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 boshka ta. Rada da da branche ne ne ma kosha ta. Rapa liya bashoniya anta liya ta. Alala la kadoniya anta. satanic powers yes. demonic manipulation of any sort yes. against you yes. you declare let it back fire, back fire. let it back fire. back fire and if you are a man sometimes in your generosity people will use things from you to take you to wish doctors bind you and tie you but you are lifting up your voice yes. in the name of Jesus in the name of yes. Jesus that any demonic manipulation yes. Yes. to destroy you you are declaring let it backfire. Backfire. Anybody that will take your picture, your name, your your shirts, anything that belongs to you, your money, to any evil order, you are commanding the judgment of God to come upon them. Come on, lift up your voice. Eshelia atona makosha ya Alla la 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 katada da da bashoria Elia bambranta ni abakonia ha Rapa bani abakonia bashua anta ya Ashala la 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 abakonia bani ata Rapa ni abashonia anta ya Eshala la 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 Shalia bani anta ya Rapa bala bakada da 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 bashoria ha Rapa ni abalia ashona na na mata ya Amaria bashoka bawa atarish Shala la 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 kato Amanda ba Amanda ba Amanda ba Amanda ba Amanda ba La 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 You need to, if you have never, they, that, I'm, I've taken some of you in the past, those of you that used to follow me, me 2020, those days, I mean, during the time of COVID, we even did a practical action of breaking soul ties. Now, as you go home today, is there anybody today? today. Now, next week, is there anybody next week? Next week will be which date? 18th. 18th, we would have crossed Valentine. Good. So, you, we are going to break not just so ties, every demonic connection. Somebody say every demonic connection. Every demonic connection. Next week it is total deliverance. And I'm telling you, some of you, you'll be permanently delivered. In fact, next week, some of you have to come here with your husbands, your boyfriends, all those mumus. Bring them. Because God needs to deliver them. So that you can have peace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Sir. Yeah. You are 
going to we are going to go through active deliverance next week. Now you write down all those people. Even if it's a book, write them down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, you write them down according to age. Maybe you, you started very early, 20 and 1972. You started from 1972. You write them down, write, write, write until 2024. Maybe you finished last week, January. You say from now you are committing yourself to the Lord, holy unto the Lord. You are going to write them down and you are going to go through them one by one. Breaking them individually. How many of you have done it with me online before in the past? Raise your hand. Those of you who have done it with me online. Yeah, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah, some of you have done it with me online many years ago. But those of you that are new, maybe you have never done it. If you have done it online, you have done it. Maybe you did it in 2020. From 2022, maybe you have not done it. You have committed maybe seven or eight. <laughs> So bring those news <laughs> and let's deal with them. Are we together? Yeah. We are going to deal with them. It is between you and God. You are not bringing it to me. I don't need it. I don't need that booklet. What for? <laughs> it is for you to pray. Amen? Yeah. Some of yours is very lean. Three, four. Yes. But you see, can I tell you something? Don't tell anybody I said. Hear me? I said don't tell anybody so if maybe pastor joshua meets you and they want to marry you and they ask you so sister mary how many people have you been with what have i taught you the magic number is what ah you cannot what remember no that, that, that one that guy will tell you you are an idiot how come you can't remember i said i've given you the magic number is what three i said the magic number is what three okay you don't understand if you are still slow, let me leave you and move forward. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. You need to break the soul ties. Tell your neighbor, break the soul ties. Break the soul ties. I'm not saying write three names. You are writing all of them. All of them. On a sheet of paper. Or wherever it is, you write them. Or you have it on your phone. You write the names and you pray with them. Break them. Whatever connection it was, bad luck, whatever it is that has brought upon your life, deal with them. And then, after that, you tell the Lord, Father, do something new. And God will grant you something new. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You are dealing. Otherwise, I am telling you, we may come back visiting this thing again. Why? Because if you have not dealt with the soul ties, it is very difficult to maintain one relationship. If you may have it get married where then people people but still it may still not work why because you have not spiritually dealt with what you're supposed to deal with before you entered into that marriage so every single one of them that's why i told you this book buy for your husbands buy for your partners if you are a man here buy for your wife so that they read and understand and you make sure this ceremony to be on youtube you make you make them listen to the sermon so that it will bring some sense into their head. Amen? Amen? Yes. So please write the list or anything you need deliverance from. Maybe it is not some, I mean, something, but it is, it is not a person, but you need deliverance from something, from the spirit of death. There is a bondage of death on you or strange sicknesses, certain schizophrenia, some funny thing. Next week is the hour of deliverance. Come properly dressed for you are going to get delivered. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. yes, lift up your hands. You are taking the last prayer. That may God do something new in your life. Yes. And if you have something new, may God establish it. Amen. You see, some of you, God has blessed you with a good marriage, a good relationship. You have said, Father, establish this thing. So that that woman does not wake up from the wrong side of the bed and say, me, I'm out. I mean, strangely, you are declaring in the name of Jesus. Father, preserve this marriage. Come on, speak to the Lord. Preserve this marriage. Preserve this marriage. Come on, lift up your voice. Preserve me. If you need something, you tell the Lord. Father, give me a new time. This is your last prayer. This is Rabba Baba 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 Baba
Shut up. 